Okay, so in the last video we talked about the context and the background for the revolutions of 1848. And in these two videos, this one and the one that follows, we will talk about specific instances of revolutions in 1848. And these revolutions start in France. So in this video, we'll look at the French Revolution of 1848. Now again, remember, when we're thinking about these revolutions of 1848, we're talking about very different political groups aligning for a specific cause which in these cases is usually overthrowing the government so the they all have an interest in getting rid of the current government they all just have different reasons for it And like we'll see in other cases of revolutions in 1848, this will be a coalition of liberals, radicals, and socialists. Now, they're all going to have different reasons for wanting to overthrow Louis Philippe, but they're all going to agree that Louis Philippe has to go. So let's get into the story. So we'll start our story in 1846. So in 1846, we are kind of just now starting to recover from the so-called hungry 40s. So things are just now starting to pick up. And remember the potato famine affected everybody in Northern Europe, not just the Irish. It just affected them the worst. So the potato famine affected the French it just wasn't nearly as bad because there was other food to compensate for the potatoes, but it was still not pleasant. So in 1846, about a third of Parisians were on some sort of either welfare from the government, which usually involved like food payments, like they would give you free food, or non-government charity. So we're talking millions of people are receiving some sort of charity. And we start to see around this time a brand of French socialism start to emerge. And two guys that we might want to pay attention to Louis Blanc and Pierre Joseph Proudhon. I'm trying to pronounce these French names right, but I'm probably not. Uh, these guys 
were very, very militantly socialist. So Louis Blanc is famous for saying that owning property is the same as theft. And that might be a position that even Marx would maybe say goes a little bit too far. But Louis Blanc says that property is theft. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. He didn't say that. That was the other guy. That's my mistake. He said property is theft. Louis Blanc, on the other hand, said that you had a right to work, which Marx might say doesn't quite go far enough. But these guys become important French socialist voices. And as we said in the previous video, these ideas are gaining a lot of popularity because so many people are out of work and capitalism is at least partly to blame. And people are hungry. People don't have any money. And at least part of the blame, if not all of the blame, falls on the capitalist system. And so socialism is becoming more and more popular. And because the government is capitalistic, the socialists want King Louis Philippe to go. That one's pretty simple to understand. The reason the radicals and the liberals want Louis Philippe to go is a little bit more complicated. So starting back in We'll start in 1835. Louis Philippe, who was not necessarily the most left-leaning king, he starts to become a bit more authoritarian. And he starts to crack down on freedom of speech. Especially speech that disagrees with him. So in 1835, he bans political gatherings of over 10 people. So if you're going to have a meeting or a rally, you can't do it if there's going to be more than 10 people. But the liberals, who are the ones who are upset with this, they find a neat little loophole. The liberals and the radicals find a neat loophole. There's no ban on dinner parties. You can have a giant dinner party with as many people as you want. So what they start doing 
and this becomes known as the banquet campaign. What they would do is they would hold a banquet and you may have to buy a ticket To the banquet and in the middle of it in the middle of the dinner a person would give a long we'll call it a toast which was actually a speech but you're not paying to hear the speech you're not paying to hear this political speaker you're paying to go to the banquet and there just happens to be somebody giving a speech in the middle of the banquet Louis Philippe allowed these because let's face it Banning dinner parties in France would be really hard. The French people love food and they love parties like this. Louis Philippe would not be able to do this. So it would be really hard to ban dinner parties. These are really popular. And so he has to let them keep going. This doesn't stop, though, the authoritarian nature of Louis Philippe's rule. So Louis Philippe keeps making the regular liberals not the super rich ones. More and more upset. There's nothing in particular, he's just not listening to them. They're just getting more and more frustrated. Frustrated is probably a better word. So despite all of their efforts to overcome the ban on political gatherings, nothing seems to be changing, even though they are organizing around the banquet campaign. In 1848, however, things finally come to a head. All of the frustration with Louis Philippe and Louis Philippe's frustration with the banquets finally comes to a boil. And there is going to be a giant, well, before there's the giant banquet, Louis Philippe bans the banquets. And there was going to be, so this happens in February of 1848. And the banquet organizers plan one last giant banquet to like let out all of their frustrations. And they purposefully hold it on February 22nd, 1848. 
and the date is important because February 22nd is Washington's birthday. And there is a message in there because who is George Washington? George Washington is a famous revolutionary. The banquet never happens because the government threatens the organizers with arrest and prison, and that sparks the revolution. And so finally, we get the socialists to join forces with the liberals and the radicals. Everybody agrees that Louis Philippe finally has to go. And so we get a replay of what happened in 1830. You have the poor workers manning the barricades throughout Paris and you have the liberals kind of orchestrating a political transition And Louis Philippe sees the writing on the wall and he resigns on February the 24th, 1848. And instead of a new king, France becomes a republic again. And they put in place a provisional government, which is just a fancy way of saying a temporary government. Until new elections can be held. Now, it seems like this provisional government is going to hold the alliance together. The provisional government seems to hold that alliance of socialists and liberals together. Because one of the really important things that this provisional government puts in place are things called the national workshops. And these were the idea of Louis Blanc, who was in the provisional government. They allowed him to be in it, to voice the concerns of the poor workers. So give them a job. The government will hire them to do work. The government always needs people to, you know, build roads or uh, maintain bridges and ports and canals. There's always work that can be done. Let's let these people do them. Let's let these people do these jobs and pay them and everybody wins. 
So, unfortunately, even though Louis Blanc was in the government, these workshops were considered a joke. by the rest of the government. And they were run that way. So instead of giving people like real work to do, they would be told to like dig a hole. And the next day they would be told to fill the hole in. But they did provide money to desperate people and they really were relied on. But the liberals hated them. They hated these national workshops. And we've discussed why liberals don't like socialists, because socialists undercut the entire power structure that liberals want to join into. So in June of 1848, it was announced that the workshops were closing. And this time we get a repeat of what happened in 1832. The poor people rebelled, but the liberals controlled the rest of the government and ordered the barricades blown up. And so that pretty much stops whatever was going to happen in June of 1848. So the liberals won again. And to finish the story, in December of 1848, they hold the new elections. And the guy that wins to become the new president of France is Napoleon's nephew, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, we will come back to talk about Louis, Napo Louis Napoleon Bonaparte because he is a really weird and interesting figure. Uh, but we will come back to him uh, probably when we start talking about the Crimean War because part of the reason the Crimean War starts is because Louis Napoleon Bonaparte wants to live up to his uncle's uh, rather large shoes and start a war and win one. So that's part of the reason why the Crimean War breaks out. And so we'll talk about Louis Napoleon uh, in a few videos. So we'll talk about him more down the road, uh, but he's, he's an interesting figure. So this is the French Revolution of 1848. 
in our next video, we will talk about what's going on in Austria and all the little Germanys in 1848. So until then, this is Mr. Nissen signing off.